Alfie is about to share some very good news with the Biker Grovers. That's coming up after News Round now with Julie. What's the story Liam Gallagher pulls out of the Oasis tour? And the ship from the past that's sailing into a new future. Hello, and first, trouble for Oasis. Liam Gallagher, lead singer of Oasis, has pulled out of their tour of the United States, leaving brother Noel to front the band. It's the latest in a series of problems for Britain's biggest band. Chris has the details. Just weeks ago, Oasis was confirmed as the biggest group in the country when a quarter of a million fans turned up to see them play at Nebworth. But the Gallagher brothers haven't achieved the success they'd hoped for. Oasis still have to conquer America. This week, they start a three-week tour of the States. Noel told Newsround he couldn't wait. And we're, off to, uh, we're off to America again. It'll be all right. It'll be good, man. I'm just looking forward to doing it. But it seems the Gallagher brothers' dream is in trouble. Last night, Liam pulled out of the group's US tour, leaving Noel to sing instead. Today, Oasis's record company released a statement claiming Liam was called away at the last minute to sort out a personal matter and hopes to join the tour later. The personal matter is his London home. He's sold the house but has nowhere else to live. It comes just days after Liam pulled out of a television concert complaining of a sore throat. Disappointing many fans. I mean, I, feel, I do feel sorry for the fans that are in America, that the tour that they're doing now, but he's got over there, so it doesn't matter, does it? It's not the first time Oasis have had problems touring the States. Earlier this year, their tour was cut short when their bass player dropped out. Liam also complained of a sore throat then. And now it seems Oasis could have another battle of the bands on their hands. First, it was Oasis v Blur. Now it could be Oasis v American Rockers R.E.M. They've just signed a £51 million deal with Warner Records, the biggest recording contract ever. R.E.M. have even sung about Oasis on their new album, but they're not singing words of praise for the band. The hijacking of an airliner which was forced to land in Britain has come to a peaceful end. The plane, which had nearly 200 passengers and crew on board, was seized as it flew from the Sudanese city of Khartoum to the capital of Jordan, Amman. After refuelling at Larnaca in Cyprus, it landed early this morning at Stansted Airport. Newsround's Nick Gardner reports. The plane landed at Stansted at half past four this morning. The hijackers had wanted to go to London's Heathrow Airport, but were diverted to Stansted because it has special facilities to deal with these types of emergencies. Police at once set up a link with the hijackers and during the morning they were persuaded to release most of their hostages. Then at lunchtime today, after nine hours of negotiations, the hijackers finally surrendered. Six Iraqis were arrested by police and are being questioned. Hijacking is now a very rare event. The last time it happened in the UK was nearly 15 years ago. That too ended peacefully. Passengers on board the hijacked plane are also being quizzed by police. It's expected they'll be able to continue their journeys within the next couple of days. Now a quick look at sports stories in the news. The British Paralympic team came home this morning clutching an amazing 122 medals, 39 of them gold. After 10 days of intense competition in Atlanta, Britain came fourth in the medals table. Manchester City manager Alan Ball has resigned just three matches into the new season. City lost two of the three opening matches, having been relegated to the first division. Among the front runners to succeed Alan Ball is former Arsenal manager George Graham. England's cricketers have been thrashed in the final yeah. test against Pakistan. An English batting collapse left the Pakistanis needing just 48 runs in their second innings to take the game. It means England have lost the three-match series 2-0. And now to a brand new soap opera that's coming to a screen near you, but not your television screen. Friday's Beach is being shown on the internet. It's the first professionally made soap designed just for the internet and it's set on the sunny coast of Australia near Sydney. For Newsround, Michael Peshart reports. Friday's Beach is the most ambitious show ever produced for the internet. Alison Harrington is the executive producer. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to um, halfway through episode one where we have the gang which are down at the beach. So I'll click here to go to um, an episode. Julian! Oh, it's part of the game. God. I'm going. It's a familiar story of clean cut Australian teenagers. But compared to normal television soaps, there's an overload of information about the characters. You can read their personal diaries and even listen in on their innermost thoughts. As long as you think through what you're doing, as long as you know what you want, things will work out. The technology also allows you to interact with the program giving advice, for instance, to those about to make a dreadful romantic mistake. If you really want to know more about me, you can click here and actually send her an email. Um, so that's quite an exciting thing and, and she will write back to you and, you know, you can say, well, I think Julian's a creep and you shouldn't go out with him. More soaps in cyberspace are now being planned. This is Michael Peshart for Newsround in Sydney. And finally, to an historic ship that's made its final journey. The Golden Hind is a copy of a famous English ship which sailed round the world 400 years ago. This weekend, the replica left Great Yarmouth in Norfolk for its last ever journey down the Thames to become a permanent exhibit. Newsround's Tim Lavelle spoke to the crew on board. buzz off doing um, guided tours and then you get moving between ports and when you get a good breeze it's an incredible experience serving on the ship for the past 23 years this modern golden hind has been a living museum it's visited hundreds of ports throughout the world so the crew dressed in traditional clothes can show people what life was like for sailors in the past the original Golden Hind ship was built more than 400 years ago. Under its famous captain, Sir Francis Drake, it became the first English ship to sail all the way round the world, seizing treasure along the way. In the 1970s, a replica of the ship was built to follow Drake's routes around the high seas. It recreated many original features, though to the relief of the modern crew, this time they put in a toilet. In the 16th century, they didn't. They had, um, I don't know if you can see out here, but out the window, there's a uh, balcony out, outside. With, uh, it's called a gallery. That's where the officers had their latrine, so they just basically did their business right into the sea there. But now the adventures of this modern Golden Hind are coming to an end. It's moving into a permanent home on the banks of the Thames. But for this historic last journey, there was one thing missing. There wasn't enough wind to put up the main sails. After travelling 140,000 miles at sea, the Golden Hind needed a motor to get it into London. <laughs> and that's it for today. Join us again tomorrow, live at five. Till then, bye-bye.